Animal Crossing, the game that's keeping most of the population sane while 2020 burns outside our windows. Like many fans of the franchise, I have a very special place in my heart for Animal Crossing. See? I put it right there. Growing up, I loved video games, but I didn't have very many friends. Sad. And within those few friends, most of them weren't super into video games. Sad. So I grew up Brother. playing games either alone sad. What I'm getting at is, I'm not used to being able to connect with people over video games, let alone get to experience them with my friends together. But the one game that my few friends did play was Animal Crossing Wild World on the DS. Hours, I remember days, playing. sometimes mostly, weeks in a row, during summer vacation with my best friend Kate. It was always the highlight of her summer, and depending on your point of view, that may or may not be depressing. My family also used to have a tradition to visit the rest of my family in Canada every July, so my brother and I would continue to play Animal Crossing with our cousins. Nothing could stop us. Not even the great borders of the United States of America. We had this game we made up where we all meet up at one person's town, dig a bunch of holes in the shape of a maze, and then one of us would chase the others around with a bunny hood, gas mask, and axe. Like some sort of morbid the bunny tag. game. Which, looking back, was a bit misleading in the innocence of the actual premise. When Animal Crossing New Leaf was released, Kate and I got our hands on it the day of our high school sophomore prom, and we very much wanted to ditch it entirely just for the game. It's not like we had dates or anything, but we ended up going anyway and it was lame. All in all, I love Animal Crossing. I get that it's not a game for everyone because of its slow pace and open-ended nature, but it was one of the few games I got to experience with friends on a really deep level and collected a bunch of fond memories with. Now we have New Horizons the game that parted the clouds and descended upon us when the world needed it most. I like the game a lot. I've got my gripes, which I'll get to at some point, but while playing the game, I started thinking about the original, Animal Crossing for the GameCube. I had a GameCube growing up, but my mom didn't buy Animal Crossing for us, so that meant I had no idea it existed. That's just how the world worked for me back as a kid. If my mom didn't buy it for me, then it didn't exist. So now, as an adult, I've started to make the connection that not only do I have my own money to buy my own video games, but I can do whatever I want, mostly. And using that newfound power, I've decided to go back to the basics and experience firsthand the beginning of one of my favorite game franchises. What's changed? What secrets have been hiding from me? Well, I guess we're about to find out together. The classic train scene. Rover walks over and asks if he can sit with me, promising not to fall asleep and drool on my shirt, to which I reply, No way! Wow, it's nice to know there's still plenty of rude people in the world. And he sits there anyway. So you go through the typical beginning of an Animal Crossing game. Who are you? I'm Jaden. Where are you going? Mustard. What's your credit card number and mother's maiden name? September 27th. My friend has a house for you because you're stupid. Okay. You arrive in town, meet Tom Nook, and he offers to let you check out the vacant houses he's got. Uh, let's see. We've got Medieval Torture Dungeon, Haunted Backyard Garden Shed, Chinese Sweatshop Locker Room, and 15th Century Empty Pool. Uh, yeah, I'll take a locker room, please. After settling on a place, Tom Nook asks for the payment of 19,800 bells, to which I realize I have nothing, so I'm like, uh, no. And he's like, you better freaking give me the money. So I'm like, here. To which he realizes I barely have even 0.05% of what he wants from me. And he straight up laughs in my face. You only have a thousand bells? You're joking with me, right? Why? You're so short. I can't help but laugh. <laughs> so he puts me to work at his shop to earn the rest of the money. You get various tasks to complete for Nook, be it planting nice flowers around his shop to to make it look nice. I planted them around my house. Meeting the other villagers, making deliveries. Bro, when I delivered this Sue E chick her like signed copy of the notebook on Blu-ray or whatever junk she ordered, she completely just destroyed me out of nowhere. Boy, that's mine. Why do you have it, Jaden? Are you working for Tom Nook or something? Oh, you are? <laughs> How amusing. You mean to tell me you didn't have enough money to buy a house when you moved? <laughs> Well, how silly. Were you the mental run to the litter or what? Oh, I'm just having a little fun with you. I suppose everyone has to take a bold step once in their lives. So you must not have any money to buy furniture. Don't be ashamed. Here, take this blue wardrobe. Y you simply must take it. I bet you go home to a sad little empty house every day, don't you? It may not be much, but beggars can't be choosers. And that's when I realized how absolutely 
brutal this game had the capability of being. I heard that it could be sassy at some points, but I was straight up murdered by this, this gothic drag queen pig just for being a delivery boy. You can't say that to the, like, <laughs> Amazon Prime delivery guys. What the heck? <laughs> That's how you get your stuff smashed. So you know what I did? I sent the biggest guy in town, Rocco, a letter and used my smooth talking skills to try and send him a signal and take care of her. And just in case that didn't work out, I made a community bulletin board post to warn the others. After you finish being a corporate wage slave, the game finally becomes the Animal Crossing experience I'm used to. Catching bugs, finding fossils, waiting an entire week for Tom Nook to finally sell a stupid fishing rod. I'll admit Coming from New Horizons, the original Animal Crossing doesn't have much to offer. Maybe it held up better in the past or I was able to have more fun with it because I was younger and easier to be entertained, but I found myself strapped on things to do. Sure, I could fish for two hours straight to make money, but I could also just play another game. Why I think New Horizons is the best game in the series so far, big asterisk on the so far, is that it saw where players were taking the franchise and ran with it far beyond what we could have hoped for. Oh, people really enjoy being able to customize their house and are using the little pattern spaces to make cool paths for their town? Well then let's give them a bigger town and more pattern spaces and hundreds of new and modernized furniture items and let them put them outside wherever and however they want. And let's let them shape the earth and sea. I've put hundreds of hours into New Horizons already and I'm not nearly done with the game. My island still looks like crap. I played the original Animal Crossing for a week or two and could only put at max an hour into it per day because I ran out of things I wanted to do. Oh, so New Horizons is the most superior game in every possible way, right? Ha ha ha, no. While New Horizons has much more for you to do, the thing I think the original Animal Crossing got right that the new one doesn't is the villagers. Since I would get bored of continuously failing at fishing in the GameCube version, I found myself talking to the villagers much more often, and that's where I had the most enjoyment. The conversations with the villagers in the GameCube version have so much flavor. Sure, Sue E called me a mental runt of the litter just a minute ago, but that brought out something in me that New Horizons hasn't been able to do within 300 hours of me playing. Talking to the villagers in the GameCube version made me remember why I liked the game so much as a kid. They say and do interesting things. I don't know if it's just me, but New Horizons has some of the blandest texts I've seen in Animal Crossing yet. It feels like what they say is limited to like five things, <laughs> and I honestly don't enjoy talking to them and haven't built a single connection to any of them on my island. I don't care who moves in, just so long as they're really super hot. I'm talking hunkalicious. Feels like it's been raining all the time lately. I hate getting wet. Jaden, you feel the same, right? No, actually, I don't really mind. Oh, really? Well, why don't you just stay in the rain then, since you love it so much? And I hope you catch a cold! I don't know what it is about me, but I seem to be just as popular with boys and girls. It's madness. Meanwhile, in New Horizons... Hi, Jaden. Sometimes I like to sit. No, I don't want any! I'm telling you for the last time, you foul creature! Go away, hippie! Oh, wait, it's just you. I thought it was another one of those weirdos handing out tissues. Hi, Jaden. I've been having a good day. All right, see you later. Shrivel up and blow away, shrimp. At one point, I walked up to Sue E, and she just started screaming. I'm begging you. Would someone please change that hideous town tune? Jaden, I highly doubt you have a talented bone in your body, but you do seem to be able to run fast. So be a deer and go change that horrible music, would you? So of course, I changed the town tune. Anything for Sue E, her wish is my command. I'll say normally I'm not a big town tune changer in the games, but this one made me laugh. Is that better, Sui? You like that? I wasn't expecting to have an arch nemesis in Animal Crossing again because it hasn't happened to me since Wild World, but Sui really just came into my life and slapped me around begging me to hate her. Say, didn't you owe Tom Nook a fairly large sum of money? I was just wondering, did you ever manage to pay him back? Well, what's it to ya? 
Wow, you seem a little touchy, Jaden. I guess you're still just a burden to society. But that's what Nintendo got wrong in the new games. I want drama. I want enemies and bloodshed. The animals in New Horizons feel like just objects for me to judge on appearances and get items from. All in all, I very much like Animal Crossing. I know New Horizons isn't for everyone and is far from perfect, but I'm a big fan of the type of game it is and the cons don't outweigh the pros for me. Do I wish the villagers had a shred of life to them? Yes. Do I hate the new music they wrote for it and desperately want to have the old music back? Yes, but I can put my Godzilla statues together like they're on a date. Is the old Animal Crossing lacking in objectives and even slower than I could have imagined? Yes, but at least I get verbally abused by my neighbors and can hit Sue E with my net. So if you haven't heard, oh god, Ari. So if you haven't heard, James just announced his new game, Cafe Chaos. It's a turn-based card game where you build food combinations and try to win a food fight against your opponents. There's different abilities and characters you can play as. And if you get the animator expansion pack, you can find me in there with Ari and a lot of other animators. My food card is pasta with no sauce. <laughs> it's a fun game James and his team worked really hard on, and what else are you going to do during quarantine? You can check out more details by going to the Kickstarter, I put the link in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I didn't know what to expect going into the game, but I'm sure glad I did, because that was a whole experience. Alright, talk to you later, bye.